Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Eustace City Hall. This is a regular city commission meeting. Uh, it is 6 o'clock. It's Thursday, January 16th, 2020. If you'd like to join us, we're going to stand for a moment of silence and then the pledge of our flag. And our vice mayor will lead us in the pledge. Let's start with a moment of silence. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It is cool. going to officially call us to order. Mary, is there a quorum present? Proper notice been given? Yes, Mayor. Thank you so much. Mr. Nybert, is there any agenda updates, sir? No, sir. Thank you so much. Commissioners, before us, we have the approval of minutes from January the 2nd, 2020 regular city commission meeting. What's the will of our commission? Move for approval. Thank you, ma'am. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee. Aye. Commissioner LaHoop Smith. Aye. Commissioner Morin. Aye. Commissioner Alaberti. Aye. Mayor Holland. Aye. Next, we have presentations. I'm going to ask Erin Bailey to come up. Erin's our events and uh, tourism manager for the city of Eustis, and she's got um, a great presentation for us tonight. Welcome, Miss Erin. Good evening. Oh, I'm a little tall tonight. <laughs> Goodness. Good evening, Erin Bailey, uh, city of Eustis events and tourism manager. I have had the honor to um, help out with the newly formed Vet Fest Committee. Um, so back at the beginning of November, we had a fantastic event in not only Eustis, but across city lines. Um, a lot of it was here, and we appreciate all of the participation from the commission and the community as a whole. So tonight, I am thrilled to ask, none of them followed me up here, I'm thrilled to ask <laughs> Sherry Hutchinson and, <laughs> from Exit Real Estate Results and um, Jan Weidman from Gator Harley-Davidson to come up and help me present a couple of checks um, from the proceeds raised at, at VetFest. So we were actually able to um, hold back a little bit of funds for next year, which will help us, you know, kind of promote along the way. And they did it. They came up. That's great. <laughs> and um, we, are, we are really very happy to be able to provide $25,000 to two very deserving um, organizations. So the first one is the um, Last Ride, which is a fairly new 501c3 formed by Tony and Sue Raffrano. Uh, this provides for burial services for veterans who may not have the um, family nor the means to do so. The other organization is One Team, One Fight for PTSD. Keith Totten is the founder of that. Um, it provides for awareness uh, of those who have traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. So um, we're, we're just absolutely thrilled to present them each with a $25,000 check. Wow. wow. like to say anything sir if you'd step over to the mic you don't have to well I just want to thank uh, the city of Eustis uh, really the city of Eustis is the uh, was a driving force they hosted the whole thing vet fest it was just a really uh, awesome uh, event uh, got we got uh, we got cooperation from everybody and this committee uh, of five there's only five of us on the committee uh, really lean and mean and uh, everybody chipped in got it done uh, raised a bunch of money for a great cause. Our uh, last ride is, a, is something that my wife and I put together several years ago. Uh, we try to find uh, 
uh, indigent uh, veterans uh, who, uh, who have passed and uh, can't afford a funeral. We make sure that uh, they get a funeral with full military honors, or even veterans that, uh, that just can't afford, families that can't afford the funeral services. We, we assist them in, funer in the services. So uh, we want to thank uh, the city of Eustis, thank the committee, and we really appreciate uh, so the Tony. If you will get my contact information from Aaron, I want to help you with uh, being able to help veterans that can't afford those funeral services. I'm in a position to be able to do that and would love to be able to help you all with that. Mr. Keith, you know that I'm going to call on you next. So. <laughs> and I know you probably don't like it, but uh, anything you'd like to, to say. Um, first, I want to thank the commission and the city of Eustis. Uh, I was raised in Eustis, and I've been here for 17 years city that represents uh, our veterans as well as they do here. Um, I am proud to be a veteran and I'm proud to, to, to be in a city that, that supports so many organizations like our veterans here. And my organization continues to throw support at these local programs or 501c3s. This money right here goes right back to the community to continue helping these veterans that are, are uh, have these injuries of post-traumatic stress, TBIs, uh, uh, military sexual uh, abuse. So um, I want to say on behalf of my organization, thank you so very much for the support that, you, that this community continues to show our veterans and the programs that are here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all of you. Eustis has some great events. That event this year, was very touching to the heart and it made us look good around the whole state of Florida and it wasn't it wouldn't have been there except for your hard work and dedication so on behalf of our commission and our residents thank you all thank you mm -hmm. we're ready we're ready thank you Coming next to appointments, we have the reappointment to our Historical Preservation Board. Matthew Callis. Matt, you want to come up and talk to us for a minute before we work on this? Thank you for all the work you've done for us over the years. Well, I appreciate the, uh, the well wishes and thank you again for uh, the reappointment. It's been my pleasure to serve. Uh, when I looked at the date, I saw 1998, 22 yeah. years. <laughs> I'm gone. Uh, but, uh, you know, thanks goes to Pauline Yowler, who took me under her wing way back when, when she saw I had interest trying to find out about my house. And she said, hey, I need you on the preservation board. You know, you've got an interest in history. And so, you know, it's all, you know, dedicated all to her. So I appreciate, uh, appreciate Thank you. your, your um, uh, well wishes and everything. Thank you. And you were a big help to us last year with one of the houses that came up before us that was uh, trying to determine whether we should allow that house to be destroyed or, or to stand still today. And it was your your expertise and, and your opinions that help this commission make a decision. That. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank I'm you. Very proud of that. I'm looking for a motion for reappointment of Matt to our historic preservation board. I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee? Aye. Commissioner LaHoop Smith? Aye. Commissioner Morin? Aye. Commissioner <coughs> Alberti? Aye. Mayor Holland? Aye. Thank you, Matt. Great. Thank you. Great. Next, we have audience to be heard. We're going to ask that when you come forward, if you would give us your name, if you're a resident of the city of Eustis, and if you would try to keep your comments to three minutes. Mr. Nyberg? John Duffy? Thank you very much, Commissioners, for allowing me to do this. Uh, my name is John Duffy. I live at 527 West Blue Water Edge Drive. It's over in the Blue Lake Estates Development. Uh, I was hoping that Vice Mayor Lee was going to bring up the issue first, and then I would just want to add some stuff to it. Oh, yes. It involves the ex extra water in Blue Lake. Since we have moved, we moved in the house about 2014. Since that time, the lake has come up seven feet, and it is about ready to come into our, our lower level of the house. It's uh, ten feet away from it. If the lake comes up another eight to ten inches, it will it will destroy our house. Uh, I've got pictures, and I. This is before a picture. 
I was hoping for an overhead so the audience could see that also. But. This is what it looks like. So your dock is the underwater? Dock is, yeah, the dock is gone. By six feet, yes, ma'am. You know, any other lake, they'd be, if it was Lake Gracie, they'd be. They'd be yay. happy. Yeah. But oh my. There's one house on the lake itself that is completely underwater, has been condemned, and is abandoned. Uh, a second home next door to us also conveyed vacant. They haven't been able to sell anything because of the lake property. A third home, which is ours, is about to be. Um, I'm sorry. The third house is, is about to be um, inundated with the water. In addition to that, all properties on the lake have suffered the loss of at least half of their backyard, uh, flooding pertinent structures such as storage sheds, irrigation pumps, children's playhouses, swings, fences, docks, etc. There are at least six docks that are completely underwater right now. I've, I was started the, talking to people about this over a year ago, and I've got no results from anybody at this time. Everybody says, we'll get back to you or we'll have to set up a meeting. Nobody ever does anything. Uh, our latest hope was just, ha just happened a couple days ago. Uh, Vice Mayor Lee came out to my house to look at the, at the, the problem, and uh, hopefully something will be done about it. Uh, Another issue also, two new developments right across the street are going to be dumping water in this whole area. And the problem seems to be the fact that the irrigation systems for the lands, for, for the, pro the homeowners, are being pumped in from the city of Eustis, being dumped on the lawns and then dropped into the lake. That It filters down into the lake. And it's, uh, there is one person across the street, across the way from the lake that's been in the, on the lake for 43 years. She says, they didn't have any problem until Blue Lake Estates was developed and, and the, as, as the houses were built and the irrigation systems were put in place, that's when the lake started to rise. Um, the only other, uh, there needs to be something done about at least pumps put in place, uh, drainage canals or something. But the immediate issue that I'm worried about is the fact that if we get another tropical storm, our house is gone. And uh, from a standpoint of the city and the lake, you're losing property values. Very, you know, the houses around the lake can't be sold right now because of this issue. Every, like I say, everybody's property is, the backyards are gone. Okay. Uh, what's left of the property, uh, this, they're squishy. Vice Mayor Lee knows that because she was walking around my backyard the other day. Mr. Duffy, our, one of our city engineers is in the building tonight. He's hearing you. We will make sure this all gets to him. They can take a look at it. Mr. Nybert, can you get back? Actually, uh, Rick and his staff were out there this week Have looking at out? lake levels. Um, it, it's a unique situation because the lake is half owned by the state of Florida and half owned by the private landowners. Uh, we have a meet, trying to get some meetings set up between uh, St. John's Water Management District, Lake County Water Authority, and the Lake County staff to look at the situation. So um, as any, everybody knows, all of the lakes right now, particularly in the northern part of Lake County, are at extremely high levels. St. John's just uh, notified everybody here in the last couple of weeks that they're opening the locks to reduce the lake levels because of the high levels of, of all of the lakes. So this is not an isolated incident. Lake levels throughout our, our area right now are at extremely high levels. And, and I will confirm that I was out there, and it's really bad. The longer you stand there, the more down you go into the sloppiness and the muck and all of that. And so it is a concern, and I did speak um, to our city manager, and he did. He's trying very hard to make this meeting happen, and I think that we'll put our heads together and maybe come up with something. And I do know that uh, Commissioner uh, Campion, chair of the county commission, has a concern mm -hmm. about the lake levels also at Blue Lake. So you are being heard, so I think we're into the point now where we can get something maybe moving. So yeah, I mean, we'll certainly look at uh, options. Yeah, I mean, the, the immediate uh, issue is, is um, obviously looking at the trends in the lake if they're not, if they're not coming down. Uh, Blue Lake is a unique lake. It does not have any natural mm -hmm. outflow. It's a ter what's called a terminal lake. Mm -hmm. All the drainage and, and comes stays. to that lake and stays in that lake. So you have to to rely on natural evaporation to reduce the level of that lake. Um, 
there's, there's been plans looked at in, in doing drainage systems so that we're talking multiple millions of dollars to do that to create drainage systems from that through the chains of lakes that that feeds into so it would be from uh, Blue Lake to Lake Sutara to Lake Joanna and Crooked Lake so all of those lakes are within the same chain and to eliminate that would obviously take water from those lakes and take it down the chain of the drainage chain so to speak um, an immediate uh, uh, possibility is to put pumps and drain the lake. The question is obviously, given the ownership of the lake, whose responsibility is that? And obviously, we can look at ways to, uh, through programs with uh, FEMA and St. John's to see if there are any uh, stabilization programs to help stabilize those shorelines from the, the increased water levels through grant programs that may be available to the homeowners. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. For Thank you, Mr. Duffy. I think that's the important thing. The statement you just made is that they know they're being heard now, and Absolutely. we'll try to address it. Is, 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 it, a is it a man-made lake, or is it natural? It was it's exactly natural. my question. It's, it's, a, nat natural it's a natural lake. lake. Correct. Yeah. But it has no outlet. No. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Next. I have, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Pebbles Brooks. Good evening, good evening. Mm -hmm. My name is Doma Brooks, but I go by Pebbles. It's much easier to remember. <laughs> so I want to first thank the commission and the mayor and vice mayor for allowing me to speak this evening. I am a new nutrition business that opened up into the city of Eustis. I live in Mount Dora. My oldest daughter goes to Eustis High School. She also is in ROTC and weightlifting, and she's also doing softball. Wow. Ooh. I also have a younger daughter. She goes to Round Lake Charter, and she runs track. So we have a pretty active um, family. My husband is a Popka PD. I also, back history, have worked for Orange County Corrections. I am technically still employed with Orange County Corrections, despite what's going on right now. <laughs> but my passion is really interacting with individuals, um, helping them towards their nutrition goals, just being healthy, active, and just have fun doing it. So um, I brought that to Eustis, the city of Eustis. I'm located right next to Double Take Pizza. <laughs> and they are phenomenal. They have taken care of us thus far, and um, we take care of them now um, as well. Uh, I greatly, greatly appreciate uh, Miss Gail, who has stopped by in my establishment. Um, and I'm not one for big attention. I'm, I'm just kind of vanilla. I stay very neutral. Uh, Ms. Uh, Emily came in to see, see me as well, so I, I thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs> and I just really um, see a need in just the world in general, and so I am trying my best to just make it a happier, healthier place that each and every one of us could live in. So um, I do fitness events. I'm a Zumba instructor. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one trainings as well. Um, very cost efficient because life happens and we may not be able to afford every and anything but I do believe that our health um, is very important to each and every one of us so um, I hope that you guys enjoy my company here in Eustis um, the community is very very friendly like it's very cozy everyone that is in a pop gut or in Orlando that my main client base is from has come to visit me and they have nothing but good things to say about the city of Eustis so I'm like this is where I live <laughs> so um, again I want to thank you so much um, and I, I, I plan on hopefully staying for a very long time yeah. thank you welcome <laughs> thank you for opening a business here in the city and thank you for sharing some of your delicious smoothies with us earlier. Yeah. Yes, They're sir. outstanding, so thank you so much. Stephanie Carter, the president of our Chamber of Commerce, is in the back. I'd like to see if you all two can meet up or she could come by and visit you to see if they can help promote your business as well. Absolutely, okay? yes, sir. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Nybert? I have Gail Isaac Thomas. And just because you put somebody else's name doesn't mean you get six minutes. <laughs> we don't bank minutes, Miss Gail. You wouldn't give me six. I'll do one and a half. Saturday night. What time is it? It's comedy show time. I do have tickets tonight. And if you're interested, 
to see me after the meeting. The Laugh Out Loud Comedy Show. Mr. Nybert, are you coming? I'll be at the mayor's table. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. I hope to see all of you there. Boss? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes. But I know my boss will be there. He'll be there. But anyway, if anyone is interested, I do have tickets tonight. And they're $15 each. Table of 10, 125 So I would like to see everybody there. One community in unity. Miss mm -hmm. Gail, thank you. And it's so good to see you up and around again. It's been a while you've been sick. So it's good to see you out. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Nyberg? That's all I have, sir. Anyone else before we close this session would like to come address the commission? Yes, ma'am. My name is uh, Kathy Gonzalez. I live on Estes Road. I live on Blue Lake. Um, actually, someone did approach um, the city of Eustis probably a little over 10 years ago. Her name was Yvonne. She actually worked for the city. And she's the one whose house is completely gone. But she, she's passed on. She sold it. And so no one did anything. And um, it's going up. I mean, we had a rain shower last week. It went up. Our, we have to move our pump again. Our neighbors have moved their pump. Um, we are in the county. Um, and my concern is, and I'll keep bringing it up, is Link, a Lake Lincoln Lane. You're going to put all those houses, and we're going to get it again. We're going to get it from the west, and we're going to get it to the east. And you're going to continue to build those houses and nothing, the lakes. you got to think about the lakes around there because we're getting heavy showers and everything. I mean, so... You need to look at that before all this building goes around lakes, especially. People on the other side. I mean, our dock, we're probably, our dock, I think it's, the lake has actually gone about 10 feet since we've lived there. We used to mow our under the dock, and our dock is about four feet now, and it's gone. Um, and our oak trees are gone. Um, and we continually have to move our equipment up our, we're lucky because we're, we're high, we're at a pitch. There's some people, their, their gates, which is, I'm talking about the county side, so went around and took pictures. A little gnome guy is underwater. Uh, he's been there for a while. Their porch is gone. So it's, it's really bad out there. And I just, I want you to think before all these building goes on that you're going to flood us even more. And we're going to lose, we're going to lose our value in our houses. We're, we, a lot of us have very nice houses around there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, they're going. So. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. Gonzalez. I have to tell you, I live on um, Lake Woodward, and I'm just now starting to see the docks again because of the, the water levels out there itself. It's, it's kind of amazing. Um, before the docks stood out of the water for about 10 feet, and now you're, they're underwater. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Cliff Jenny. I live on Bates Avenue. I also have a house on uh, Blue Lake. Uh, I've been there since uh, 2008, and I have the same problem that everybody else is mentioning here. Uh, I'd like to add that uh, probably about six, seven years ago, Lake County was asked to look into the lake level, and they commissioned a third party to do a study on the lake and they did a study that had uh, pictures from I think 1948 to the current year I think it was 210 maybe at the time or 2010 and it showed the level of the lakes uh, from an aerial view and uh, you probably ought to look into that to see if you can find that report that report summarized that the cause of the lake being high was because of two uh, 10 day 100 year rainstorms basically the rain that fell in 10 days was equivalent to a, a one storm that you'd have every 100 years and they had two of those within six months it was uh, Fay I think was the one storm and then there was a Mexican one that followed it um, I think it was a poor conclusion because here we've got the problem yet and we haven't had those storms in quite a while uh, See, I can't see things here. Oh, their, their final solution was to pump the lake, but nobody bothered to pump it. And 
the house that uh, Kathy was speaking about was bought by a young couple who put about fifty thousand dollars into the house and then they lost the house to the bank because it was flooded and I'd say it's because the county didn't act didn't do anything about it uh, some technical numbers maybe when I first moved in I looked at the lake and measured the distance across it was about a thousand feet across so the radius is 500 the area is 7,850 785,000 square feet and the depth has gone up about 10 feet there's 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot so there's 5,871,000 gallons for every cubic foot that that went up. It's gone up 10 feet. That's 58 million gallons. That's a lot of water that's collected in that lake. I also heard today that that lake is landlocked basically and hasn't drained or doesn't drain. I've spoken to some old timers who told me that at one time that lake did drain, that they could run a canoe from that lake into the other lakes. I think that those, the drainage was changed years ago when all the construction started, maybe as far back as when they put in 441. But, uh, I'm not sure that that lake initially was uh, blocked. Uh, one other item is that that lake was um, used for irrigating orange trees. This whole area around our lake was orange trees at one time. And that was something that was never really picked up in the study that the county did. Um, if you took the water and pumped it out of that lake and spread it out over all those orange trees, those orange trees were sucking the water out of the ground and sticking it back up into the atmosphere. That's not happening anymore. So we definitely need to do something about this before another man loses his house and we continue to lose our yards. Um, so I would suggest that you talk to the county and ask them to pull that report back out and have them uh, talk to the individual people who are the individual uh, third party that did that report ask them to come back and take a look at it and see if they can't reconsider their results thank you sir thank you thank you anyone else not seeing any we'll come on down now to our consent agenda we have seven items on the consent agenda is there anything anyone wants pulled off for discussion not hearing anything looking for a motion to approve our consent agenda so moved thank you ma'am Second. Thank you, ma'am. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee. Aye. Commissioner LaHoop Smith. Aye. Commissioner Morin. Aye. Commissioner Alaberti. Aye. Mayor Holland. Aye. Mr. Attorney. Yes, Mayor. First item is Resolution 2006, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Eustis Lake County, Florida, approving the appointment of William Mike Shepard as the City of Eustis Finance Director, effective January 20th, 2020. Thank you. Um, there's an old saying that when a door closes, a window opens. Um, unfortunately, Colleen moved on to uh, tend to family issues, so we were looking for a uh, finance director. Uh, we reached out to Mike uh, to see if he'd be interested in filling in uh, on an interim basis till we found a permanent replacement. After several weeks, Mike came to us and said, you know, it feels like home again, and was wondering if we would consider making him a uh, our permanent appointee. Uh, I liked Mike's attitude. Uh, his history with the city is exemplary. Uh, my experiences with him are positive on the wonderful things he'll be able to do for that, and therefore I'm recommending that the commission appoint him as permanent finance director. Any questions from the commission? No, I'm, exci I'm excited to see you, Mike. It's good to have you back on board. Sorry about that, Derek. Over no, you're fine. Any members of the public wish to speak on Resolution 2006? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion of the hearing. Back to you, Mayor. Perfect. Mike, I just want to say I'm, I'm thrilled that you're willing to take this step and, and come back and join the city of Eustis. You're back home where you need to be. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Looking for a motion from this commission. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve Resolution number 20-06. Thank you, ma'am. I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee. Aye. Commissioner LaHoop Smith. Aye. Commissioner Morin. Aye. Commissioner Oliverity. Aye. Mayor Holland. Aye. Ordinance 2001, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Eustis, Florida, voluntarily annexing approximately 1.35 acres of real property 
located at 1991 Country Club Drive. Mr. Magyar. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Roland Magyar, Senior Planner for the City of Eustis. The proposed annexation and future land use and design district assignment is at 1991 Country Club Drive. The applicant is Richard and Michelle Ecker. They are um, annexing the property a total of 1.35 acres, and they are requesting a future land use of suburban residential and a design district of suburban neighborhood. The property is located on Country Club Drive just east of the intersection with East Crooked Lake Drive. Um, large lot uh, area um, on on the lake. So as part of our review for the evaluation, first we will evaluate the annexation and go through the, the um, future land use amendment and then the design district amendment. So for the annexation, the joint it's, the area is within the joint planning area agreement with Lake County. Uh, it is also within the, J, uh, the JPA and with adequate urban services. It meets the Florida statutes for con continuity um, and the notice was given um, in the Lake County uh, it was also advertised twice in the newspaper um, and it also begins to close uh, a gap in the in the existing uh, enclave area uh, as far as the um, urban services there's only water available no sewer at this site we will, t uh, for the future land use, we look at Chapter 163 requirements, uh, the future land use of element appendix requirements, and Chapter 102. Here's a map of the future land use uh, for the city. You can see the location of the city limits with suburban residential on the east and the west side of the lakes, um, and the county uh, future land use is urban low. And you can see the distinction between the city land use and the county land use uh, basically we have one dwelling unit per acre more than the county at four um, whereas our su suburban residential only allows uh, residential uses the county future land use does allow office and commercial as well however the county zoning of R1 limits their use to single family so it is consistent with the surrounding future land use um, designations and established patterns the SR designation is consistent with the Lake County urban low. In addition, we look at uh, public facilities and services. Uh, we have the capacity to serve them in water as well as uh, the transportation uh, can handle the, a single family home as well as parks and all the other services that the city provides. Uh, it is a vacant lot, so the natural resources aren't really going to be in, the, in a developed area. So there really won't be any uh, natural resources or uh, uh, vegetation impacted um, transportation and water supply obviously uh, our level of services there are, can be met uh, and it is consistent with the existing future land use and comprehensive plan so the valuation of the design district we're going to suburban neighborhood uh, it is consistent and compatible with our definition um, which is a residential uses with interconnected street frameworks the county does not have a, an equivalent uh, design district. So, of course, we did our notifications to uh, advertisements in the news consecutive weeks for the annexation. Um, we did the 500-foot notifications. I had two phone calls. One was, uh, uh, was noncommittal. The other one was against. We also did the future land use in the design district. So staff recommends approval. Uh, the requested annexation is consistent with the JPA and Florida statute requirements. Uh, annexation would increase the tax base of the city and increase the annual operating revenue. And the proposed designations are compatible and consistent with the comp plan and the design um, and the land development regulations. Are there any questions? Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at the site. So we have continuity because of the lake? Correct. And so all they want is water service. They're not going to get the sewer systems. But no, correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. The Florida statute allows people to annex across uh, water boundaries. Okay. Thank you. So they have septic tanks there. Yes. Okay. They they have such a long, a large lot that uh, their septic tank will meet the requirements 
distance from the lake, things like that. And, and they're not in pro enough close proximity that under the statute we could require connection to a facility, correct? That is correct. Those are all quite large homes in that area as well. <coughs> so in, in the annexation, all they do is pay for water services, but they also pay taxes to the state of Eustis. Right, because they, they are right. annexed. I'm, I'm saying the obvious, it's just right. kind of question, because it looks like we're creating an enclave, but I understand well, it's, The area is an enclave, yeah. and basically um, the lake is, is just a, a boundary like a road mm -hmm. and can be annexed across. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? Would any members of the public like to speak on Ordinance 20-01? Seeing none, we will close the public comment portion of the hearing. Commissioners, before us, we have Ordinance Number 20-01. What's the will of the commission? Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of Ordinance Number 20-01 on its first reading. Thank you, ma'am. I'll second. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee. Aye. Commissioner Lahoop Smith. Aye. Commissioner Morin. Aye. Commissioner Alaberti. Aye. Mayor Holland. Aye. To the first reading of Ordinance 20-02, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Eustis Lake County, Florida, amending the comprehensive plan pursuant to Florida statutes changing the future land use designation of 1.35 acres of recently annexed real property located at 1991 Country Club Drive, as more particularly described herein from urban low in Lake County to suburban residential SR in the City of Eustis. Would any members of the public like to speak on Ordinance 20-02? Seeing none, we will close the public comment portion of the hearing. Commissioners, before us, we have ordinance number 20 02. What's the will of this commission? And approval. Thank you, ma'am. Second. Thank you, ma'am. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee? Aye. Commissioner LaHoop Smith? Aye. Commissioner Morin? Aye. Commissioner Alaberti? Aye. Mayor Holland? Aye. Ordinance 2003, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Eustis Lake County, Florida, assigning the Suburban Neighborhood Design District designation to approximately 1.35 acres of recently annexed real property located at 1991 Country Club Drive. Would any members of the public like to speak on this, this ordinance? Seeing none, we close the public comment portion of the hearing. Commissioners, before us, we have ordinance number 20-03. What's the will of the commission? I make a motion to approve. Thank you, sir. On first reading. Second. Thank you, ma'am. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee? Aye. Commissioner Loop Smith? Aye. Commissioner Morin? Aye. Commissioner Alberti? Aye. Mayor Holland? Aye. This is the first reading of Ordinance 2004, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Eustis Lake County, Florida, amending the comprehensive plan, changing the future land use designation. 2.456 acres of real property located on the northwest corner of County Road 451 and 19A, more particularly described herein from sub suburban residential SR to mixed commercial residential MCR in the city of Eustis. Mr. Magyar. Good evening, Roland Magyar, senior planner. So the applicant is uh, Greg and Jacqueline Picard and Ralph and Deborah Brooks. They're requesting a future land use change from the suburban residential to the mixed commercial residential and the request of the design district from suburban neighborhood to suburban corridor. Uh, it should be noted too that there is an existing uh, commercial building at this site that is, that is now non-conforming and this would make it a conforming use. Here's the site location um, at the intersection of uh, 19 and 452. Uh, you can notice that the, um, on the uh, east side of 19A is multifamily on the west side of 19A is single family with some large lot residential along Lake Eustis in the uh, southwest corner. There is also some vacant land behind it that is primarily a wetland use um, that could buffer any kind of uh, negative externalities to the single family. Here's a look at the future land use map. So basically the UR or urban residential and the MCR, they allow the uh, the high density, 12 dwelling units per acre, versus the SR, which is up to five dwelling units per acre. Now the MCR is a mixed use commercial, what they are requesting to change to. Here's the current design districts. Basically the 19A uh, divides that between the suburban corridor and the um, suburban neighborhood. 
So let's take a look at the future land use designations. The suburban neighborhood provides for a, a mix of single family and townhome dwellings in the suburban atmosphere, up to five dwelling units per acre, with single family attached and detached and duplex uses. The mixed commercial um, is there to regulate the character and scale of commercial uses, minimize impacts on roadways, and compatibility with residential uses. It allows commercial institutional office as well as the residential up to the 12 dwelling units per acre um, and a 0.75 floor area ratio. And I need to correct my uh, staff report said two. So if you saw these huge development numbers, um, that was my error. I missed a clause in the code that stated if you're within 100 feet of an SR, future land use, that you're limited to 0.75. Um, so the suburban neighborhood uh, design district, it is predominantly residential uses, uh, neighborhood scale, uh, commercial. Uh, however, there is limitations to those only if you have a development of up to 50 dwelling units and they are not allowed in the existing neighborhood. So therefore, um, the uh, residential uses um, are limited, or the commercial uses are limited in the suburban neighborhood design districts based unless you meet those criteria. Uh, interne interconnected trails and bikeways uh, with a street framework uh, with different block forms. And it's a mix of uh, detached residential uses with neighborhood supporting retail parks and civic spaces. Suburban corridor design districts, what they're asking for <clears throat> is a linear concentration of commercial uses, which are predominantly oriented and um, com uh, compatible with the adjacent neighborhoods. The street system can accommodate the density and intensity of the form, and basically uh, the code requires them to be on a minimum of collector streets, which both 452, which is a major collector, and 19A is a collector street. Um, so basically this location meets the criteria of suburban corridor um, based upon the, the transportation network system and the surrounding uses. So take a look at our analysis for the comprehensive plan. Uh, and basically this really applies to both the design district and the comprehensive plan. The criteria are almost identical. So is it consistent with the comprehensive plan? Uh, the, we went over the definition of MCR and suburban corridor, and it meets that definition. Um, it discourages urban sprawl. This is a, an infill development. It creates walkable communities, they, so they have a shorter distance to go to so for a retail use, maybe a convenience store, something like that. Uh, allows a mix of land uses, promotes compact growth, and pr promotes a revitalization of the area. So is it in conflict with the land development regulations? Uh, basically the land is vacant and the future development will be in accordance with the land development <coughs> regulations. So any kind of uh, natural resources, uh, there are wetlands on the site, will have to be taken into account according to our land development regs. Uh, is it inconsistent uh, with existing and proposed land uses? So the proposed uh, future land use provides development with character and scale, promotes compatibility, it meets the on-collector roads, standard and provides commercial support for nearby residential. Here's a map of the existing uses in the area. You can see the red is commercial at the tip, uh, vacant behind it. Um, the bright yellow is single family. The uh, kind of um, olive green is the multifamily uh, with a church and some single families um, along the lake. Um, So analysis of the request, again, if, uh, if the change conditions justify the amendment, uh, we looked at the previous future land uses and all in those dates uh, we found uh, these four old future land use maps, they all showed, well, I'm sorry, the first three showed that there was a local convenience center designation on two and it actually turned into a neighborhood commercial center, um, which is an actual designation, the local convenience center was a amorphous center where there was no defined parcels. It was just a, an area that this is where a, a convenience center could, should go to. The neighborhood was actually on parcels of land. So here are those old maps. You can see in the LC right there, the local convenience, and that was in 
2 maps. And then here's the one in March of 2010. And you can see it was changed. Whoops. It was changed. Whoops, I'm what am I doing here? Okay. <laughs> to a, an actual designation for parcels instead of the, the amorphous circle. And then the next year, or actually in seven months later, uh, when we changed the future land use, I guess, got rid of those neighborhood centers, um, it was gone. So if it was decided then, there was no real reason in, the, in, the, in any of the stuff that we found to justify removing it. So would it result in demands on public facilities and would it exceed the capacity? Right now there is sewer and water to the site on both um, uh, 19 and 452, so there's plenty of capacity in that. Would it result in significant impacts on natural environments? Our, our land development regs and comp plan have code that protect wetlands on the site. Uh, would it resort, uh, result in orderly and logical development patterns? And it provides a consistent development transect, which is how the, the land uses change from single family, multifamily, commercial, um, and, and that would be a good location based upon the collector road system. And would it be consistent with or advance the public interest? And the parcel has an existing uh, commercial on the site. And uh, it provides for redevelopment that minimizes impact. It provides for housing options and commercial support to that. Um, and then uh, we looked at uh, Chapter 163. Any amendments to the future land use shall discourage the proliferation of urban sprawl. It's located within a developed mixed use area, so it's an infill development. Um, and our future land use element, it meets the principles of compatibility, public services, natural resources, and transportation. And of course, we did our uh, surrounding property owner notification. I believe I got one phone call just to see what's going on because they were on the other side of the wetland area. Um, other than that, there was no uh, conversations. So staff recommends approval. The proposed designations are compatible and generally consistent with the the use this comprehensive policy plan and land development regs. Are there any questions? Seeing no questions, would any members of the public like to speak on Ordinance 20 04? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, and staff, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak on behalf of Mr. Brooks and Mr. or the Brooks and the Picards. Uh, Mr. Brooks has operated uh, Longwood Vacuum in the city of Eustace here since 19, or 2006. And uh, he welcomes the opportunity to, to have this property changed. I'm here to answer any questions, and thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Any questions from the commission? Would any members of, other members of the public like to speak on Ordinance 2004? Seeing none, we close the public comment portion of the hearing. Measures before us, we have uh, ordinance number 20 04. What's the will of the commission? Mr. Mayor, I move for approval of ordinance 20 04. Thank you, ma'am. I second it. Thank you. Any discussion? Not hearing? Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee? Aye. Commissioner Lou Hoop Smith? Aye. Commissioner Morin? Aye. Commissioner Alberti? Aye. Mayor Holland? Aye. Ordinance 2005, this is the first reading, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Eustis Lake County, Florida, changing the Suburban Neighborhood Design District designation to a suburban corridor on approximately 2.456 acres of real property located at the northwest corner of County Road 451 and 19A. Would anyone like to speak on this ordinance? Seeing none, we close the public comment portion of the hearing. Commissioners, before us, we have ordinance number 20-05. What's the will of this commission? I make a motion to approve on first reading. Thank you, sir. Second. Thank you, ma'am. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Lee? Aye. Commissioner LaHoop Smith? Aye. Commissioner Morin? Aye. Commissioner Alaberti? Aye. Mayor Holland? Thank you. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Does gone. anybody else remember well, buying a hamburger there wrapped in wax paper? Yes, yeah. ma'am. It used to be a hamburger stand, mm -hmm. and um, I can remember going there and you got the hamburger. It was Jimmy Pridgen? Was it the Pridgen? It's been too long ago. I know. That's been <laughs> way long ago. It's been a long time, Karen. It's funny how things, the wax paper, I can still remember the feel. 
<laughs> Thank you all. Thank We're you. Coming down now to future agenda items. Is there anything that a commissioner may want to put on a future agenda? Marie, anything? Mm -hmm. Bob, no nope. anything? Karen? Nothing. Thank Madam you. Madam Vice Mayor? Well, I think when once the meeting is arranged between all parties for Blue Lake, then we definitely put it back to Oh, we'll definitely have to come okay. back and talk about it, I'm sure. Okay. okay. All right. Come back now to City Commission reports. Anybody want to start off, Karen? You want anything you want to report on tonight? I had something earlier, but it's gone. Mm -hmm. So do you remember the wax paper? The wax paper. I know the wax paper <laughs> memory just kind of blew everything out. Um, I'd like to welcome Matt Callis back to the historic. Um, Matt has a real passion for all things historical, and uh, we're we're glad that he's staying with us. But. Yep. Madam Vice Mayor, anything you want to report on? Yeah, I've had the pleasant experience um, of participating in the Leesburg Martin Luther King Parade and um, with our mayor, and that was quite a nice experience. Um, I would encourage everybody to attend the Lake Chamber, Lake Eustace Chamber. Uh, is a sunset, sips, 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 and sunset. It's so cool. They have um, entertainment, and it's just nice seeing the sun go down and all that. So it's a very good idea that they put together, and, and I enjoy it, and I think everyone else would too. Um, and I did visit uh, Infinite Nutrition, and um, the Pebbles just spoke about, and I did go to uh, visit Marco's Pizza. And uh, so it's great to have two new businesses in the city of Eustis. And uh, so that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Well, anything you'd like to report on? Nothing. Thank you. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> this is the second time. Second time. This year. Marie? I'm, I don't have anything really to report. Um, some of my friends that live downtown are noticing the lights are going in and out. Um, so I can't remember if Duke Energy is control of the lamps or we do, but... We do. We'll take care of them. I mean, there are like three of them now. Okay. And those are the LEDs, right? Yes. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, Marie? Mm -mm. Mr. Nyberg. I have nothing other than to wow. congratulate uh, Commissioner Alberti on her upcoming nuptials. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Attorney. Nothing, sir. Wow. Everybody's oh. quiet tonight. Who's uh -oh. this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-uh, to a mic, no, no, come to a microphone. <laughs> Just to follow up on Commissioner, uh, or Vice Mayor Emily Lee's comment, uh, Sips and Sunsets is the first Friday in February, 4 to 6, right before the kickoff of the event downtown on the streets. But she mentioned Marco's Pizza, and they will be, catering the hors d'oeuvres for the next Sips and Sunsets. Mm -hmm. So I just awesome. want to let you know that. I'll be Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, um, we, we had a ribbon cutting for Marco's Pizza. If you haven't been out there yet, it's across from Chick-fil-A. What a great pizza place. So go out and, and, and pay them a visit. They're really great people out there. Um, had fun out there this afternoon. Uh, I enjoyed going with Emily over to the Martin Luther King Parade in Leesburg. Got to see a lot of our Eustace folks there. Uh, I think even Carla Mitchell was their grand marshal for that parade. So got to spend some time with her and, and plenty of folks over there. February is a busy month for us here in Eustis, so I hope to see all of you out at our different events. We've got, um, of course, we're going to start uh, this this uh, Saturday with our comedy show, but next month we have our African American Heritage Festival, which has a great banquet, a um, uh, uh, great parade, and then a festival. Um, and then, of course, we have our George Fest uh, that is... Uh, 118 years old, is it this year, Karen, I think? Oh, well, we'd have to ask Stephanie. Stephanie, what are we at, 118 <laughs> years this year yes. for George Fest? Yes. So, um, and Erin assures me that she's got some great entertainment she's working on for that event. So we're looking forward to it, um, to getting that done. Yes, Bill? <laughs> Don't forget about the gala. Ball, ball, we have a, uh, a ball 
on January the 31st, which is a ball where we're going to crown the king and queen this year for our George Fest event. So um, all that's coming up. Watch your city um, emails and please stay involved with our city. There's a lot going on and the more people we have involved, the better it is. We've got a great community, people with big hearts trying to do the right thing. So um, it is a pleasure serving this community and working within it. Thank you all for being here tonight and we're adjourned. Okay. Yeah, I don't okay. think they've got everything out for you.